हेलो एवरीवन आइए हम फिर साथ में हैं एक नए लेसन्स के साथ और इट इज़ सेम फ्रॉम योर टेक्स्ट बुक एंड द सेम यूनिट दैट इज अडोलसेंस राइट एंड द लेसन नेम इज देर इज इन ड्यूरिंग स्क्रिप्ट सो बेसिकली वी सी दिस लेसन इज ऑल अबाउट अ गर्ल हु इज शेयरिंग हिज फीलिंग्स एंड एक्सपीरियंसिस वॉट ही सॉरी वॉट शी फेल्ट when she was in the age of adolescence and uh, the experience was about his uh, daddy's work and now how his work is coming with them and in this way how she is saying that this is the lesson named after that her feeling her experience and that is daddy's enduring script right now you will say what is the meaning of enduring इंड्यूरिंग मतलब जिसका कभी अंत नहीं होता वो साथ साथ चलता है जो स्क्रिप्ट लिखने की कला है स्क्रिप्ट मतलब राइटिंग वर्क से रिलेटेड है राइट सो बिफोर गोइंग थ्रू दिस लेसन लेट्स नो अबाउट द राइटर ऑफ दिस लेसन सो मिस अमारा बनवानी देव इज द राइटर और ऑथर ऑफ दिस लेसन हु रोट डैडीज इन ड्यूरिंग स्क्रिप्ट मे बी शी है शेयर द फीलिंग्स और हर एक्सपीरियंस विथ हर डैडीज थ्रू दिस शॉर्ट स्टोरी राइट सो हु इज अमारा बनवानी देव सो अमारा बनवानी देव इज द लेडी हु टीचर्स इन हाई स्कूल मैथमेटिक्स एट गुड शिफर कॉन्वेंट बेंगलुरु इन टू थाउजेंड थ्री she won high commendable prize for her entry for a horse shoe nail in the commonwealth broadcasting association short story competition right so now here we start the daddy's enduring script this is story is all about the experience of a girl who had always with his father during he was working and he all she always trying to observe how his father is writing with what color of pen he is writing what are the circumstances they have to face during the at that time right so she is sharing all the experience here now we will learn more about this lesson after listening the audio of this lesson so first we will go through the audio part of this lesson and then we will we will understand the explanation of this lesson so let's so let's have a look and hear the audio part of this lesson unit 4 adolescence reading c daddy's enduring script seated in our drawing room daddy quietly wrote into the night the green ink from his fountain pen turning thoughts into words in his beautiful handwriting my mother and little sister would be fast asleep in the bedroom but i sat huddled in a blanket on the cane chair opposite his desk and watched it was the 1960s we lived in chennai in a smiling modest house with whitewashed walls and green windows a big garden around it and an inviting porch to help make ends meet my parents had rented out half the house daddy was a freelance writer contributing short stories to tamil magazines and scripts for films although the film offers were few and far between before i was born he had once held a steady well paying job in trivandrum as malayalam news reader his name nagar koil k padmanabhan known to all india radio listeners in kerala he had suddenly resigned from air to pursue with relentless passion his dream of being a writer among daddy's early friends in chennai were actors Jemini Ganesan and Nagesh the comedian Ganesan continued to visit us even after he became famous i would look out starstruck as his 
blue fiat drove in he would tease my handsome dad calling him mapilai tamil for bridegroom and the two would go on talking shop one thing daddy had gained early from his writing was mummy an english literature graduate and avid reader she was a fan of daddy's magazine stories the two became pen pals met and got married although the doe eyed beauty from bangalore was no brahmin like daddy it was a huge leap of faith to marry intercast in those days as i sat there watching daddy i wondered what he would write every day i knew how he always worked on his next story at night even as he was working on his current one at the film studios my big hit is just a script away he would smile his deep dimples showing aren't you sleepy no i would mumble although i would often doze off in the chair and he would carry me to bed next to mum i would dream of reams of white paper filled with green writing and of valiant heroes good always triumphed over evil and dad's heroes were always good when i was 10 he gave me harper lee's novel to kill a mocking bird a rather new book then just one story like that is enough for a lifetime he said i sensed the longing in him he had had a body of work by then but a big hit eluded him the novel made a great impact on me and how right daddy was harper lee never wrote another novel yet became a legend with her only book summer nights daddy would regale us with tales about the film shoots he was a good mimic with his radio star's voice and was an excellent actor himself and i would sigh what a wonderful thing it is to be a writer on sundays and holidays i would go up to the attic where i hid my journal and write endless stories of my own when daddy wrote scripts for telugu producers they would be in english sometimes he would ask me for a particular english word which i would supply my heart would swell with pride that i was a part of his writing my sister anuradha and i studied at chennai's holy angels convent a most exclusive school which my father could ill afford still he wanted us to study and speak english well an entitlement he would say then one day i heard my parents whisper excitedly of a lucrative offer that had come to daddy for a telugu film at last he would be rich and mom had promised me a red frock some stationery and a new doll there was an air of suppressed excitement in the house of dreams that were finally coming true I had a school picnic to go on early one morning the evening before daddy had come home tired from work but took me out to buy snacks and sweets for the picnic my basket was crammed with goodies i was bursting with joy daddy set the alarm for 5 in the morning ironed my clothes for the next day and went to bed the next morning the alarm clock went off i got up but daddy did not he passed away in his sleep a coronary thrombosis the doctor explained i was 13 my sister anuradha 8 daddy was just 41 along with his body our dreams too went up in flames but nindu hridayalu the telugu movie he had scripted with superstar nt rama rao in the lead had celebrated its 100th day the producer sent some additional money to my mother for the hindi distribution rights of the film the movie was a blockbuster and the first in its genre daddy's script became a recurring bollywood theme three brothers separated in childhood 
reunited as adults avenging their parents misfortunes another telugu producer had visited us to offer his condolences he remarked ruefully that my father's script for him was left half done i know the story i told him i could finish it for you he looked at me with kind eyes are you sure i nodded daddy discussed the treatment with me he smiled at my use of jargon i completed the script for him my mother who had been a teacher before her marriage went back to support the family we left our beloved home and city moving to my mother's ancestral home in bangalore then as the years rolled by life meandered in different directions for anuradha and me but our love for language and the written word stood us in good stead studies completed anuradha became a marketing professional while i became a mathematics teacher we soon had our own families and children to raise even so daddy's unfinished dreams lingered on both anuradha and i continued to write i brought out a collection of my poems while my sister published her anthology of short stories and a novel in 2003 my entry for a horseshoe nail in the commonwealth broadcasting association's short story competition won a highly commended prize selected from 3700 stories the competition was tough the judges informed me your story was beautifully told and very well written centered on an organ donation racket it was set in a remote tamil nadu village but read across the world a uk doctor used the story as a topic for debate among his university students the following year it was anuradha's turn she too won a highly commended prize for her story today my elder daughter darshana ramdev is a journalist with the deccan chronicle she always wanted to write my younger one diksha studying computer science is also an ardent writer and has an active cricket blog the t towel explanation i'm going to be a cricket writer one day she says as if it were a warning let me finish my engineering daddy passed away in 1970 two generations ago i would say but his single minded devotion to writing still glows like a beckon among his children and grandchildren anybody can die yet as i finish one more piece the story you have read i know something for sure about dad his writing never stopped okay now the daddy's enduring script the story start here seated in our drawing room daddy quietly wrote into the night the green ink from his fountain pen turning thoughts into words in his beautiful handwriting now the girl is sharing his view that when she was quite younger she they she was sitting in the drawing room not only she but also her dad right daddy quietly wrote into the night unke father jo the aaram se he wrote quietly because in when we see at the day time there are lots of noise and the writer usually prefer the night time because so that they can focus on their work they can imagine more powerfully more their imagination works in a more imaginative way right so because of that all the authors basically like to work or want to do their writing work at that late night because at that time they can be focused because of the less noise or no noise right so here the girl is telling that they were sitting in the drawing room daddy was quietly writing into the night the 
green ink from his fountain pen turning thoughts into words in his beautiful handwriting so yahan pe wo batana cha rahe hain ki the writing the handwriting of his father was so good and he was writing from green ink pen right my mother and little sister would be fast asleep in the bedroom but i sat huddled in a blanket on the cane chair opposite his desk and watched so here she is saying ki her mother and her younger sister it means they are there are four members in her family right daddy she her younger sister and her mother so here she is telling ki unki mother and unki jo younger sister hai they might be slept fast in the bedroom but she was with her daddy hai na so how she was huddled in a blanket on the cane chair opposite his desk and wash wo kya karti thi apne papa ke desk ke opposite side mein ek cane chair mein blanket ko acche se aur ke huddled matlab apne aap ko blanket se acche se cover karke wahan unke samne baith jati thi it was the 1960s matlab wo kab ka samay tha 1960s ka samay tha we lived in chennai in a smiling modest house with white washed walls and green windows a big garden around it and an inviting porch so here the girl or the author is telling the exterior and interior of her house like what kind of house they are having so here she is telling ki at that time in 1960s they were living in the chennai and their house was little bit modest right so modest here modest word is used as an adjective it means not large or expensive right so we ek modest house mein rehte the which was white washed walls and they are having green windows a big garden around it and they are having a big garden around it which is having an inviting porch inviting porch 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 ka meaning kya hota hai a small covered area at the entrance of a house matlab jo aap aangan bolte ho na samne wala aangan that is hai na theek hai aage badhte hain to help make ends meet my parents had rented out half the house to yahan jo meaning hota hai to make टू हेल्प मेक एंड्स मीट मतलब कहने का मतलब है महीने के अंत के एक्सपेंसेस है ना मंथली एक्सपेंसेस को बियर करने के लिए उन्होंने क्या किया था उनके पेरेंट्स ने जो आधा हाउस था उसको रेंट पर दे दिया था राइट डैडी वॉज अ फ्री लैंसर राइटर कंट्रीब्यूटिंग शॉर्ट स्टोरीज टू टमल मैगजीन्स एंड स्क्रिप्ट फॉर फिल्म्स तो उनके डैडी क्या करते थे उनके डैडी थे वॉज अ फ्री लैंसर राइटर फ्री लैंस राइटर मतलब क्या होता है ऐसे लोग जो किसी के अंदर काम नहीं करते दे आर नॉट दे आर नॉट वर्किंग अंडर सम वन दे आर नॉट एम्प्लॉय ऑफ सम वन वो अपनी इच्छा से काम करते हैं वॉट दे लाइक तो उन्हें हम फ्री लैंसर कहते हैं राइट सो वो एक फ्री लैंसर राइटर थे जो कंट्रीब्यूट कर रहे थे शॉर्ट स्टोरीज लिखने के लिए कौन सी टमल मैगजीन्स के लिए एंड स्क्रिप्ट फॉर फिल्म और इसी तरीके से वो तमिल स्क्रिप्ट्स भी लिख रहे थे तमिल फिल्म्स के लिए स्क्रिप्ट्स भी लिख रहे थे ऑल द फिल्म ऑफर्स वेर फ्यू एंड फार बिटवीन हालांकि फ्यू एंड फार इज अ फेज इसका मतलब ये होता है कि बहुत सारे नहीं थे कुछ कुछ ही उन्हें मिलते थे ठीक है और बहुत कुछ तो भी आने बचे थे बिफोर आई वॉज बॉर्न ही इट वंस हेल्ड अ स्टडी वेल प्लेइंग जॉब इन त्रिवेंद्रम एज मलयालम न्यूज रीडर तो यहाँ पे द ऑथर वॉन्ट्स टू टेल दैट कि बिफोर शी वॉज बॉर्न शी नोज शी वॉज टोल्ड बाय अ मदर और समवन एल्स कि उनके पापा थे वो एक अच्छे से एक स्टडी से जॉब में थे राइट एंड द जॉब वाज वेल पेइंग एट ऑल ही वाज इन त्रिवेंद्रम एज मलयालम न्यूज रीडर राइट वो एक न्यूज रीडर थे हिज नेम वाज नागर कोयल के पद्मनाभम नोन टू ऑल इंडिया रेडियो लिसनर्स इन केरला उनका नाम बहुत ही फेमस था और उनका नाम क्या था नागर कोयल के पद्मनाभम जो कि ऑल इंडिया रेडियो में फेमस था उनके लिसनर्स के द्वारा और ये केरला की जो ऑडियंस है या जो लिसनर्स थे वो होते थे राइट ही सडनली 
resigned from air to pursue with relentless passion his dream of being a writer so suddenly what happened one day he decided to follow his passion right and he thought ki nahi baba uh, now i have to follow my passion for that i'll give up this job main kya karunga is job ko ab main chhod dunga right to yahan se jo hai unka jo safar इंग्लिश वाला भी और हिंदी वाला भी दोनों स्टार्ट होता है क्योंकि आप जब कुछ नया करने जाते हो तो यू हैव टू फेस लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स राइट समटाइम्स इट हैपेंस कि आपकी सिचुएशंस जो हैं वो आपको सपोर्ट नहीं करती हैं राइट सो ऐसा ही कुछ उनके साथ हो रहा था कि उनकी जो सिचुएशंस थी उनको सपोर्ट नहीं कर रही थी बट स्टिल इवन दो ही वॉज इन गुड जॉब ही थॉट कि नहीं आई हैव टू फॉलो माई पैशन एंड दैट्स वाई ही लेफ्ट द जॉब ऑफ एयर राइट ऑल इंडिया रेडियो एंड ही वॉज न्यूज़ रीडर देयर तो वहाँ का जॉब उन्होंने छोड़ दिया एंड ही स्टार्टड हिज पैशन हिज पैशन वॉज राइटिंग स्क्रिप्ट राइटिंग राइट आगे बढ़ते हैं आगे अमंग डैडीज अर्ली फ्रेंड इन चेन्नई वेर एक्टर्स जेमिनी गनेशन एंड नागेश द कमीडियन गनेशन कंटिन्यू टू विजिट अस इवन आफ्टर ही बिकेम फेमस सो यहाँ पे द ऑथर वॉन्ट्स टू टेल दैट कि उनके जो डैडी हैं उनके दो बहुत अच्छे दोस्त थे एक चेन्नई के वो थे एक पहले जेमिनी गनेशन और दूसरा थे नागेश सर राइट और दोनों ही कमेडियन थे कॉमेडियन कौन होते हैं कमेडियन आर द पर्सन जो आपको लाफ कराते हैं जो आपको हंसने पर मजबूर करते हैं आपके सामने कॉमेडी करते हैं तो उन्हें हम क्या कहते हैं कमेडियन कहते हैं राइट तो गनेशन कंटिन्यू टू विजिट अस इवन आफ्टर ही बिकेम फेमस आफ्टर बिकेमिंग फेमस टिल ही कंटिन्यूड द सेम फ्रेंडशिप विथ हिज फादर राइट आई वुड लुक आउट स्टार स्ट्रक As his blue Fiat drove in, अब उस समय जो है Fiat होना बहुत बड़ी बात होती थी तो यहाँ पर वो जो छोटी सी author हैं जो अपना बचपन बता रही हैं वो कहती हैं कि जब मैं छोटी थी and I was I was loving that कि वो जो Fiat blue color की हमारे घर के अंदर आती थी तो वो मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगता था He teases my handsome dad. वो मेरे handsome dad को शायद Mr. जो नागर कोयल के बदमनामम थे वो बहुत ही handsome रहे होंगे तो जो उनके friend है गनेशन जो हमेशा उनको famous होने के बाद भी visit करने आते थे वो उनको हमेशा tease करते थे calling him मपिलई मपे लई का मीनिंग होता है तमिल में ब्राइट ग्रूम यानी दूल्हा राइट एंड द टू वुड गो ऑन टॉकिंग शॉप और उसके बाद दोनों क्योंकि फ्रेंड थे वो लोग फिर बातें करते 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 किसी शॉप पे चले जाते थे वन थिंग डैडी हैड गेन अर्ली फ्रॉम हिज राइटिंग वॉज मम्मी an english literature graduate and avid reader she was a fan of daddy's magazine story now to yahan pe achievements ki baat ho rahi hai the first achievement of her daddy kya thi unki mummy thi matlab writer ki mummy thi kyunki unki mummy jo thi wo ek kya thi english literature se graduate thi aur wo ek avid reader thi kiski aur wo unke father ki जो है मैगजीन स्टोरी की एक बहुत बड़ी फैन थी राइट द टू बिकेम पेन पास मेट एंड गॉट मैरिड तो यहाँ पे एक लविंग लव का टच आ रहा है कि वो लोग एक पेन फ्रेंडशिप हो गए हम कहते हैं बहुत लोग बुक वॉम फ्रेंड्स होते हैं बुक बहुत सारे जो होते हैं ट्रैवलर फ्रेंड्स होते हैं मतलब जिनकी वाइब्स मिले या फिर जिनके थाट्स मिले जिनकी फीलिंग्स मिले वो उस तरह के फ्रेंडशिप को ढूंढ लेते हैं तो यहाँ पर ये जो दो लोग थे क्योंकि ये पेन पाल से मतलब इनको लिटरेचर वर्क में ज़्यादा इंटरेस्ट था दैट्स वाई दे वेर पेन पाल्स एंड देन लेटर ऑन दे मेट एंड दे गॉट मैरिड राइट ऑल दो द डू आइड ब्यूटी फ्रॉम बैंगलोर वॉज नॉट ब्राह्मण लाइक डैडी तो वो जो आँखें थी डू आइड मतलब थोड़ी आंखों का कलर डिफरेंट है उनका राइट तो वो जो ब्यूटी थी उनकी मदर भी बहुत ब्यूटीफुल थी कहने का मतलब ये है और वो बेंगलुरु से बिलोंग करती थी बट द थिंग वॉज शी वॉज नॉट ब्राह्मण लाइक अ फादर राइट इट वॉज अ ह्यूज लीप ऑफ फेथ टू मैरी इंटर कैस्ट इन द दोज डेज तो जैसे कि आप जानते हैं कि अर्लियर वी वेर नॉट अलाउड टू मैरी विद द पर्सन हु इज़ फ्रॉम द अदर कास्ट इट्स अ बिग problem they will create the people will create or the society will create a big problem for the new couples hai na ki 
इस तरह के मैरिजेस को अलाउ ही नहीं किया जाता था अगर वो इंटरकास्ट होता था अभी ये बता रही हैं कि उनकी मदर जो थी वो ब्राह्मण नहीं थी लेकिन उनके फादर जो थे वो ब्राह्मण थे सो इट वॉज़ अ बिग थिंग कि उन्होंने अपनी मैरिज को इस तरीके से कंटिन्यू किया हालांकि उनको बहुत सारी प्रॉब्लम्स भी आए होंगी बहुत सारे रीजन की वजह से आगे एज आई सैड देयर वॉचिंग डैडी आई वंडर्ड वॉट ही वुड राइट एवरी डे I knew how he always worked on his next story at night even as he was working on his current one at the film studios my big hit is just a script away he would smile his deep dimples showing aren't you sleepy okay isko pehle paragraph ko samajhte hain the first line says as i sat there watching daddy i wondered what he would write every day to wo choti si bachchi thi us samay and he was she was wondered ki papa din bhar um, i mean raat bhar kya likhte hain what he used to write aur roz what are the things coming in his mind and how he put all the things in his word beautifully and how he do this and how it is possible ki wo itna acha kaam roz kar sakte hain to she was totally surprised aur unko matlab yakeen nahi hota tha i know he always worked on his next story at night she was telling ki even though i was not uh, know ki uh, knowing that ki what he is writing right but the thing she knows ki he is always writing or working in his short story every day he starts a new story right uh even as he was working on his current one at the film studios my big hit is just a script away and at that time one day he was working on a script of film right and he was preparing the script aur wahan pe jab wo film ki script prepare kar rahe the us duration mein wo apni bachchi se hamesha share karte the ki ab jo main script likh raha hu ye ek bahut badi blockbuster hit hone wali hai and wo bahut dur nahi hai he would smile his deep dimple showing wo itne khoobsurat the ki unke dono cheeks par bahut beautiful se deep dimple aate the aur wo itna kehte hue bahut acche se khoobsurti se muskurate the right aren't you sleepy ye baat puchte hain daddy apni bachchi se so wahan pe wo author jo us samay adolescent age mein thi wo kehti hain no i mama all the right ऑफन डोज ऑफ इन द चेयर कहने का मतलब है वो हमेशा अपने पापा से कहती थी जब भी पापा पूछते थे कि तुम्हें नींद नहीं आ रही तुम मेरे साथ जागी हुई हो तो वो हमेशा कहती थी ना डैडी आई एम नॉट फीलिंग स्लीपी और अक्सर क्या होता था वो इतना कहने के बाद कुछ देर बाद शी डोज ऑफ डोज ऑफ मतलब वहीं के वहीं क्या हो जाती थी वे सोने लग जाती थी उस चेयर पर and he carry me to bed next to mum aur wo hamesha se kya karte the daddy unko apni god mein uthate the aur uske baad mum ke bagal mein matlab jahan unki mum bedroom mein sodi rehti thi wahan pe unko bagal mein le ja kar ke sula dete the i would dream of reem reams of white paper filled with green writing and of valiant heroes good always triumphed over evil and dad's hero were always good so jab bhi wo soti thi thi she dreamed about about the same thing ki white paper pe kuch green ink se likha hua hai right and un green ink se jo likha hua hai usme kya hota tha bahut sare alag alag tarah ke heroes hote the aur wo jo hero the wo unke daddy ne hi banaye hue the unke jo heroes se bahut acche hote the aur wo jo hero the they always win over the evil ones hai na jaise ki hum hamesha daily soaps mein dekhte hain movies mein dekhte hain ki kya hota hai विलन को लास्ट में क्या करते हैं स्क्रिप्ट राइटर्स मार देते हैं तो वैसे ही उनके फादर भी सेम वे में लिखते थे और वो ड्रीम भी वैसे ही करती थी